Hey friends, thanks for joining me. I just wanted to take a moment today to create a video series that I think would be very valuable to anybody that's new to creating music. Uh, it's going to be about creating music on a budget with a Linux home studio. So we're going to start out uh, talking just a little bit about uh, what your needs are in a studio, what it is that you need specifically to make uh, studio work for you. We'll go over different hardware configurations and what is going to work best for your needs. Uh, we'll also dive into operating systems and software. Of course, we're going to be focused on Linux, but uh, there are a variety of different options available to you. Linux is going to be the most cost effective uh, if you're able to use it. And I'll kind of show you with you a little bit about what I'm using. So I'll show you my home studio configuration, the operating system I'm using, the tools that I'm using here, uh, whether it be hardware, you know, microphones, headphones, things like that, or uh, actual software tools that I'm using. So well, let's dive in and uh, get started here. One of the first things you need to understand when uh, creating music with uh, with a computer or you know recording any music is you need to know what the signal chain is. Uh, and simply put, the signal chain is what happens between your voice or your instrument and the computer. You know when it gets actually tracked to a file on the computer. So there are a number of things that happen here. Uh, first in the chain we have the instrument or microphone you see here and then from there we have a low latency audio card so a lot of times this is going to be an external audio card and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into hardware from there it's going to your computer via USB PCI or FireWire depending on what type of audio card you're using um, most of us that's going to be a USB card I think most of the uh, class compatible products that are out there now are, are USB or FireWire. Um, and then lastly, you're going to be going into your digital audio workstation. This is the software component that's actually running on the computer. So in between each of these steps, you need to be very, uh, I guess, very mindful of what's going on here. Uh, between your instrument, your microphone, and your audio card, how good is your cable? How long is your cable? Um, these things are important because each step here you're picking up some latency and you're picking up you know whatever decrease in quality uh, between these so uh, my personal preference is to keep the signal chain as short as possible I know a lot of people will like to you know get different tones from uh, preamps or amplifiers different signal processors if you have really good equipment that's fine but if you know you're really just on a budget I, I would suggest you know not even doing that uh, because you're not going to get very high-end equipment for uh, for a low amount of money so I would say uh, start out with uh, a, a short signal chain like I have demonstrated here your, your instrument your microphone your audio card into your computer and then your digital audio workstation so let's get started talking a little bit about the hardware components uh, of this uh, the first thing we need to do of course is identify uh, what your needs are in a studio so you need to know um, first of all do you have a computer if you have a, a PC or um, you know a computer that you can use was it built within the last five years and here are a few things that I look at how much uh, how much and what quality of uh, RAM does this computer have um, you know I, I prefer to have at least eight gigabytes of DDR3 um, if you don't have that, that's fine. I, I think you could probably get by with, with four or so, depending on what your needs are. I mean, as you really do more with music, you're, you're going to have, you know, there's going to be higher dem demand for uh, your PC. So uh, the first component, like I said, that's RAM. So I like to have at least uh, eight gigs of DDR3. Uh, also, I would recommend having a processor that is a an Intel Core i5 or higher. Um, so anything that, that is specced at a Core i5 or higher, you should be good with. Um, you could definitely do less, of course, but I'd like you to have a good experience with this. So that's why I'm making the recommendation. Uh, as far as hard, uh, hard drive storage, it's uh, for me personally, I do have a, uh, a physical uh, spinning hard disk drive in this computer that I'm using. However, I would recommend against it, um, and that's just for speed, and, and it kind of goes back into the signal chain. You know, if you're recording audio to disk, 
the quickest way to do that is going to be with a solid state uh, hard drive. So that's something that's a solid state drives. They come uh, pretty standard with computers anymore. You can get them and replace them for, for older computers as well. Um, it's really not a big issue. I would say, you know, stick with something that's uh, smaller storage. I know a lot of people say you need a lot of storage for all your audio files, but that's simply not the case. You know, you can get an external hard drive. Once you're done with a project, you don't need that working uh, storage anymore because you're just not using it. You can pull it back at any point in time, but I would say, you know, use a, use a smaller uh, hard drive. You're probably okay with about 250 gigabytes. All right, so uh, what are some of the other uh, objects here that, that you're going to run into in identifying your needs? One of which is, are, are you a singer? Do you plan on recording your voice at all? Uh, do you play any instruments? Uh, this is going to determine what, what you're using to um, ultimately capture your music. So if you happen to be a singer and that's all you're going to be doing is singing, you may be able to get by with, uh, you know, a combo device that's, say, a microphone that includes a USB uh, audio card. So it's actually uh, integrated and it would provide you with the same quality that you would get um, by having a separate microphone and USB interface. So I would say for if, if you're just getting started singing, that would be the way to go. Uh, if you are playing an instrument but maybe not singing, uh, you need to know is this an acoustic instrument? Is it an electric instrument? If it's acoustic, you're going to need a microphone, so I would suggest, again, going with the uh, USB microphone. If it's uh, an electric instrument, say electric guitar, um, you can get a pretty low-priced uh, either cable that goes directly from your guitar or whatever instrument you play. Maybe you play a bass and goes directly into your computer um, via USB, or you can you know, get a, a, a lower dollar audio interface, uh, and then plug into that. I would definitely recommend getting an entry-level USB audio interface because in mo most cases what you're going to be able to do with that is uh, both plug in an instrument and a microphone. You'll also have the ability later to use what's called phantom power. Phantom power is going to uh, provide essentially electricity to uh, powered microphones such as con condenser microphones. So good to have that uh, as well. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we dive into hardware. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, studio hardware. Um, some considerations to take for your, your studio hardware. Those are going to be uh, what your needs are. You know, we discussed that. Are you a vocalist? Are you playing an instrument? Uh, what is it exactly? that uh, that you need out of your home studio. What is your budget? That's going to be a big determining factor. Uh, what is your allocated physical space? So how much space do you have to work with? And um, what is your specific taste? Taste is the most important thing because you're going to have to work with this on a regular basis. If something doesn't work for you, it's really been a waste of money. So make sure that you're getting things that, that really work with your taste. So uh, real quickly here, let me um, let me just pull up my... Uh, cell phone so I can get a video and I'll just patch this in later but kind of get a video of some of the hardware that I have here so give me just a second so apologies for the uh, uh, the clutter here in the office but uh, I'm going to show you some of my hardware real quickly here uh, you can see that I have a, a pretty basic uh, notebook computer uh, that I'm doing this all from. Uh, I've got a microphone here, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. The signal chain. Uh, so we have the microphone. This cable runs down up into this USB audio interface, and then we have that going into the computer here. <laughs> and then uh, I also do have this MIDI keyboard. Now, one of the things you can do uh, in you know, in the beginning, if you're not necessarily using uh, an interface like that, and this is something that I did, uh, if you're using a dynamic microphone, meaning a microphone that does not require power, um, you can actually use an adapter like this that will plug into a microphone port. However, most uh, notebook computers anymore are going to have a combo jack, so you need something like this uh, to split out that microphone and headphone 
into two separate jacks so then you could plug into there. Uh, of course, you're just adding a bunch of uh, adapters here and very small ones at that. So it's a lot of points of failure. It's not ideal. You can do it this way. Um, and you know most integrated audio cards sound okay. You're gonna have probably a little bit more latency than you would with a USB card and uh, You know, you're not gonna have any of the preamps or anything that come with these with these uh, audio interfaces so something to keep in mind and um, Let's jump back into the slides here All right, so let's talk a little bit more about hardware. I'm actually going to pull up a uh, web browser here and let me take a look. So we've got, um, this is similar to the, the interface that I have, and this, is, this would probably be my recommendation for anybody that's new and wants to maybe sing and also play uh, an instrument. Uh, it's got a microphone input, and it's got an instrument input, and it does have this, uh, it says 48V, that's your phantom power, so if you switch that on, you can power a condenser microphone. I would say this would be the way to go to get started. Um, and then, you know, from there, really, it's, it's up to you what you want to add to, to, your, um, to your studio. The microphone that I'm using, and, and actually the one that you're hearing in this recording, aside from when I was using my phone, is an uh, SM58. And it's a pretty popular dynamic microphone for vocals, um, and it's going to be fairly inexpensive. Uh, so let's just take a look, SM58. All right, so you see an SM58, those run about $100. So we're at $200 there for, for your studio. Uh, a lot of times, look, this one comes with a stand and a cable. Um, so you can bundle that in with, uh, with an interface, and you're pretty much ready to go. You know, you obviously want to get a good set of uh, headphones so you can do some monitoring and mixing. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing too much of that with headphones. It's always great, you know, if you get heavy into mixing, using actual uh, studio monitors to perform those tasks. So just kind of a quick idea of, of how cheap this stuff is. Of course, this is brand new price. So if you want to find this stuff used, um, these SM58s, SM57s as well, um, they're pretty much bulletproof. You can find them all over eBay used. Uh, they do hold their value pretty well because they are, you know, a staple in most um, recording studio. So SM57 is going to be very similar microphone. Uh, this is used a lot more for inst miking instruments though. So you can see here, I've got actually a few of these here in my studio and they work really well. I would say this is a great utility microphone, a uh, great first purchase if you want to get something to mic, say an acoustic guitar or whatever else it may be. They're just very versatile. You can even use them for drums. Um, and miking guitar amps, whatever you want to use. So these are a great microphone, I would say, a Shure SM57, SM58. That would be probably the place to start because uh, you're going to get a great quality microphone and it's going to be a hell of a lot <laughs> less expensive. Uh, excuse me, it's going to be a hell of a lot uh, cheaper than going with an actual condenser mic. Condenser microphones, I mean, for anything of any kind of quality, you're going to be starting at around $300. So I would say start here, use SM57, uh, SM58 microphone, and then uh, from there, you know, you can you can expand out with uh, what you have in your studio. It's all about building upon, um, you know, different hardware that you have that, that you're not going to outgrow you know you'll never outgrow an sm58 you'll never outgrow an sm57 there's always a use for these microphones because they are good mics and they're affordable so that's that's my recommendation for uh, keeping it affordable okay so let's talk a little bit about uh, operating system and software uh, you do have three major os uh, configuration choices if you're going to start recording music um, most of you are going to be using either Microsoft Windows or an Apple OS X um, installation of some sort. And that's perfectly fine. You can use those and there are a lot of, I think a lot of free uh, recording software that you can use that, that is pretty good. You know, it's not going to be as full uh, featured as some of the proprietary softwares that do cost money. So, you know, something to consider in keeping things on a budget would be using Linux and that's why I'm going to be focusing on uh, in this presentation. So the reason that I use uh, Linux is really, you know, it has nothing to do with cost. It has more to do with uh, software being free and open source. And by free, I mean, um, you know, f 
free as in uh, freedom, uh, not free as in free beer. So it, it does also happen to be free. Uh, you can download, you can use most any Linux distribution absolutely free. There are some that that's not the case, but for the most part, you can use them for free and it's on a donation basis. I would highly encourage you to donate if you enjoy using the operating system that you're using. Think about it just a little bit. How much would you pay for, you know, Microsoft Windows? How much would you pay for OS X? Um, and just think about, you know, spending some money on, on your Linux distri distribution because people do work very hard to maintain these and uh, make sure that it, it works for you seamless. You know, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that you don't really think about. So without anything uh, further here, let's go ahead and, and get started. I'm going to talk a little bit about using uh, Linux. So, um, and I'm going to go into my actual configuration. We talked a little bit about some of the different things I have. I have a uh, focus right USB audio interface. Uh, I didn't tell you much about my uh, keyboard, but you did see it there in the video. We have the Akai MPK Mini. Uh, I do have various microphones, um, including the SM58, SM57s. Uh, M-Audio monitors, you may have seen those in the video as well. And then I have an AKG K240 headphones. These are great headphones for uh, mixing and monitoring. I like using them. They are open though, or, or uh, semi-open headphones. So if you're using them primarily to, um, you know, track vocals, you, you'd probably, you'd prob your money would probably be better spent on something else because they do pick up quite a bit of feedback. And that's something that I deal with on a regular basis when I'm recording vocals. So I might actually get a, a different set of headphones myself. Um, some great headphones that are pretty affordable. Uh, and are going to be great are, uh, I believe they're called uh, complete isolation, something like that, total isolation. They're really developed for drummers, but they're also great for if you're recording vocals because they don't bleed into uh, the microphone. So when your headphones are inches away from your microphone, you're bound to get some, some noise in there. Best to have the quietest headphones as possible or the ones that seal up to your f uh, head as good as they possibly can. So... Let's go into this just a little bit more. Um, I'm going to show you my uh, configuration from the software side uh, when we come back.